was watching this other YouTuber, um, his name is Big Clive, and he was doing a review on this style of an artificial fireplace with the fire effect. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. We, where we're at right now, we don't have a fireplace. I always enjoyed the fire effect, so I got one. This one's a bit interesting because it doesn't really match the one that he did. It's a little bit different. It has actually on the back is almost like an afterthought. This micro USB port that looks like they just chewed the plastic to make an opening for it, which I'm glad that it's there because my intent was I was gonna have to hack it and make it accept five volts with a diode drop to operate it because it, the, most of the ones that I saw only had this battery compartment. Why am I making this video? Well, it's been operating for a couple of months. It's getting pretty noisy. I don't really know what's going on. I'm gonna put the microphone up to it while I plug it back in. It's kind of obnoxious. And so I figured instead of getting a replacement or something like that, let's just take it apart because I know I'm not trying to fix it. So yeah, I'll put the microphone up to it there. It sounds pretty terrible. <laughs> nice and tranquil. With noise canceling headphones on, you can't hear it. So you can enjoy the effect as long as you're wearing noise canceling headphones. Let's see what we can do to fix that. I suspect that there's not much going on inside here. So there are four screws on the bottom and then it just kind of like, um, out. yep, the top just comes off like this. Oh, that's it. That's the whole thing assembled. All the pieces almost went flying out of there. There's a little bit going on here. I wonder what frequency that crystal's at. It says right on there, 32,768. <laughs> I think that's the part number. That's pretty funny. It's really nice. They have, they have the labels for the, the capacitors, what the actual capacitor ratings are. 10 microfarad, 100 nanofarad. So the motor, it looks like it's from like a cassette player. I remember these from my uh, childhood, taking apart cassette players and seeing this style of motor. I think it might be the gearbox making noise and not the, the motor itself. But what I'm going to do now is take the motor off this, this, this mount. It has like an L-shaped mount four screws holding it down to the base, which is pretty nice. And then this I want to take off, perhaps try to remove this plastic tube, which goes to a metal stick that holds the, the mirrored effect on that the LEDs lights shine up onto. And then after I remove this, see if I can open up the gearbox and put a little bit of machine oil in it and see if that quiets it down. I don't know, unless this is just way over torqued. It basically runs 24 hours a day and I don't run on a timer and it's been running continuously for three months. So, you know, it's gotten a good amount of usage. It's quieter, hard to tell. It doesn't sound like it's the motor. I'm holding the motor and I, yeah, I think it's the gearbox. There are little clips holding the gearbox together. I don't know if I can pull this off. I don't know if I want to pull this off. I wonder if I could just pop these clips off. There we go. That's one. And I'm sure we're going to see a nice gear reduction here. I don't know how many gear reductions there'll be, but... Ooh! That came out pretty easy. Okay. Oh yeah, there's a lot of grease in there, but you can see how it's all down at the bottom. There's still a lot of grease. Huh, interesting. Oh yeah, I'm wondering if it spins, it's just not the right type of grease for this. Cause it's, here, you can see if I can just get enough light on it. It's really, if you look right here, you can see where the grease, all the grease is up at the top of the gears. So maybe the viscosity of the oil is just too, I'm gonna get it wrong, is too high. It's too viscous, so it's like, as the gears spin, let's fire it up. Hopefully it won't like, with no load on it, it won't like show all the grease all over the place. No. But you can see how these two gears here are moving pretty quickly. And after however many hours of use, you can just feel it vibrating you probably can hear it hopefully you can see there where the all the oil 
the lubrication is up at the top of the gear and not <laughs> not where the gear is and that's probably what's making most of this noise it's crazy here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a q-tip that I pulled off most of the cotton off of so that I don't I don't want absorbing a bunch of this stuff but while it's running I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take this while it's running it may not be no it may be better to do it while it's not running because I want to get the cotton caught in it and just grab some of this grease over here that's on the bottom and push it across the gears and push down the grease that's up on top on those gears. I'm wondering if they just used the wrong grease, but this was not meant to be sitting in the, in the orientation that it was. Let's see what happens now when I turn it back on. It's getting quieter. Not great. I wonder too, is, if it, is it also the bearing in the motor itself? There's two screws here. I'm gonna take the screws out. Really, there's also one more gear, a drive gear on this side, for the uh, effect. There's one more gear that it seems well, like it's well lubricated, but definitely on this side with these four gear, well, three gears in the gearbox, and then the the fourth that is the drive gear is not so well lubricated. Okay, here's the motor by itself. Let's plug this in and see if we hear any sound. Yeah, it's coming from the motor itself. That helped a little bit. Relubricating these helped a little bit, but it's the motor. Sounds like it's the bearing. These are cheap motors. You could get another motor, but what I might try to do is just put a little bit of machine oil in it. I have a little bit of machine oil. It's like for a beard trimmer. Okay, so I'm going to try to take a little bit of this machine oil and put a little bit into the two holes here. These, these motors are not really designed to be oiled, but um, honestly, whatever. I guess I don't think they're designed to be oiled. I don't remember oiling my cassette player, that's for sure. Let's start the motor up and see if it'll draw some of that in. I don't want to give it too much. Quieter. Still a little bit of vibration in it. I think there's also an oil hole here. That quieted it down nicely. I think it's the bearing. I don't think the motor really needs oil. I think I'm just overdoing this, but what the heck. Yeah, I'm going to keep oiling this bearing. It looks like it's a pretty cheap bearing that's in here. And Maybe it's developed a flat spot or something. I could, it looks like the, I wish I remembered how I had this thing oriented, but it looks like there are six holes, mounting holes. So I could just rotate the motor and find another spot that's probably quieter. And then I would just flatten out the bearing in that direction. Although I need clearance for the wire. So if I rotate it too much, it might not work. But I'm wondering, that seems quieter. Let's unplug it, oops, unplug that, put it back in the gearbox this way. I've rotated the motor because it has a, a sleeve bearing of some sort. So I've oiled it, I've oiled the bearing as best I can, and then I've rotated the motor so that it's not perhaps in that flat spot that's been created. Oh, it rotates this, it mounts this way. Well, I could just rotate it around 180 degrees. It might even have been the way it was before. So maybe I'll just do it this way. We'll turn it back on and see if it, well, how it sounds. Is it any quieter? Ooh, that is much, much quieter. Now, did I just mess this up by rotating everything around? I don't think so because this has the same clips. All I got to do is reorient it. Yeah, there's the... Two clips on the top, there they are there, and then one clip on the bottom. This whole thing just kind of snaps back together again. 
and then it mounts probably this way. Uh, I mean, there is a bit of a support, a plastic support there, and then that plastic support is also sitting on top of this. But it is still a long, a lengthy piece of material. Like there's nothing on the other side here supporting this, like another bearing. But again, it's an inexpensive decoration. So let's um, power this up and see if it's quieter now. I have a feeling it's going to be a bit quieter. If I could just get the plug in. There we go. Oh, that's great. That's much quieter. Um, great. So there you go. If you have one of these things and it's making a bunch of noise, those are the two things that I would try. Pick this apart, gently open up the gearbox, and then check the gearbox and make sure that the, all the gears are lubricated and that the oil hasn't migrated to the top of the gear where it's not meshing, it's not meshed with another gear. And then remove the motor with the two screws that are holding it together and lubricate the motor's bearing that little sleeve, little sleeve bearing that's sitting in the front there. And then lubricate the motor too if you feel so inclined. I don't think it really makes a difference. But uh, it's definitely quieted it down. And I'll mark the date and see how long it stays quiet for. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it, it helps you if you're annoyed with your, with your fireplace effect making noise and helps get a little more life out of it. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.